Good evening and welcome to this newscast. On our top stories, quality education for better results in Cameroon is the goal of Ernest Galebibe, Minister of Secondary Education. In a meeting today, he urged persons in his ministry to fight against corruption and fraud in the upcoming 2016-2017 academic year. General Claude Mecca, defense staff in the Cameroon Army, has promised to channel problems faced in road construction to competent authorities. This he said as he ended his tour today on projects carried out by the Military Engineering Corps. Those were the main points. Now, the news in full. Good evening and welcome once again. As mentioned in our top stories, the Minister of Secondary Education, Ernest Ngalebibe, today presided over a consultative meeting with heads of centralized and decentralized services in his ministry in Yaoundé today. He has outlined some directives educationists should follow for quality education in Cameroon. Yvonne Ako reports. Meeting with stakeholders of the Ministry of Secondary Education this 26th of August 2016 focused on the evaluation of the conduct of the 2016 session of official examinations and their results in order to identify some of the loopholes that characterize the session and better organize the next official examinations. Discussions during the consultation meeting also centered on preparations ahead of the 2016-2017 academic year. It has given many resolution, many recommendations and instructions for us to have a, a good year, which is uh, starting in a few days. Those schools who have to close have already closed, but we will make sure by sending many controllers on the field to make sure that, that they have closed. In addition to strictly following up clandestine schools to regularize their situation and maintain the educational standards in the country, the Minister of Secondary Education, Ernest Ngale Bibeye, has instructed the various heads of the central and decentralized services of his ministry to fight against corruption, fraud and abusive recruitment in most establishments. The educationists have also been challenged to improve on their pedagogic and administrative functions and equally see to it that parents play their own role in the educational process of their children. It has also been re-echoed that institutions should respect the limited number of students per class, which stands at 60 for Form 1 and 80 for the other classes, numbers which officials say is a strategy to better manage students for better results. Meantime, second-hand booksellers in Yaoundé have decried the constant change of books at the start of each academic year. They talk of a 75% loss each time a book is changed. They were speaking to our reporter, Larry Netopaji, who sought to know the fate of books which do not appear in the new book list. She reports. Business is not moving for second-hand book dealers in Yaoundé. Staying in business with the introduction of close to 200 new books in the book list for the Francophone and Anglophone subsystems of education for the 2016-2017 academic year is a major challenge for these dealers of second-hand books. When books are changed constantly, second-hand books are kept in stock and we sell some to few customers at very low prices. A book of 4,000 francs could be sold for 1,000 francs. The government needs to intervene. Even though second-hand books are the choice of many parents for their children because they are cheaper than those in bookshops, the constant introduction of new books increases the expenditure of parents during school period reduces the profits of second-hand book dealers and enriches book writers and publishers. You can have two children, one ahead of the other in class. When books are constantly changed, we as parents are obliged to buy new books. Meanwhile, the junior could have used books of the senior. However, even with a huge stock of old books not found in the book list of this upcoming academic year, some second-hand book dealers are still sure of making sales with the presence of new schools and the launch of public exams. We don't throw books. Every teacher needs whether old or new books in his or her library. That is why even a new created school comes in search of old books so that they can be kept in their archives. 
for some second-hand book dealers who have stayed for about 20 years in the business, receiving about four customers who come in search of second-hand books these days is a matter of luck, contrary to the early 2000s when parents and second-hand book dealers were sure of a profitable book exchange before the start of every academic year. Away from education, general clothes maker, defense staff in the Cameroon Army has ended his tour on projects carried out by the Military Engineering Corps in the second joint military region. General clothes maker praised the professionalism of this unit as he promised to channel problems faced to the hierarchy concerned. Peter Sosie. The Defense Chief of Staff has been inspecting works carried out by the Military Engineering Corps in the Second Joint Military Region. Under strict instructions from the Commander-in-Chief of the Army, Paul Bia, General René Clodemaker is also out to make an appraisal of the strengths and weaknesses of the Corps, a tour that has seen him in the littoral and southwest regions. Donc, les interventions du génie sont très variées. Eh... The envoy notes with satisfaction that the military corps is implicated in various projects with elements showcasing a high sense of professionalism and efficiency. Little delays recorded. As an important player in boosting infrastructural development, the Defense Chief of Staff says that government should continue to have confidence in its achievements as the realization of the core is positively felt by all Cameroonians. General René Clonemaker has drawn the curtains of his visit Friday with a tour to the military engineering base in Douala, where he has promised to transfer the worries of the unit to the head of state for a satisfactory response. He has also taken the pulse of works at the naval base, as well as the access route to the waste disposal unit of Hizaka. Two former militants of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement Party, MRC, who recently crossed the carpet to the CPDM party have been installed. Reasons behind their decision, just three years since the party's creation, are still at the top of every lips. Larinetta Paje tells us more. The politics of cross-carpeting is as old as 1950, but for it to be a reality in Maurice Camto's Cameroon Renaissance Movement, CRM, created just on August 2013, necessitates some explanations. They, they are free. It's like when you want to, you go, you go and discover something, and then you discover that, you go to a new something, and you discover that you, you cannot express yourself very well there. You are, you are free to, 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 to go back where, 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 where you come. The, then we cannot uh, oblige people to remain with, with us. It has made news in Cameroon that several militants of Cameroon's opposition political parties have joined the CPDM for either egoistic reasons or they were not satisfied with the leadership of the party and vice versa. Could it be the same reasons why former CPDM's Bebga and SDF's Epangu have left CRM for CPDM? We heard that they organized a, a, a press conference that they are not with us again. They didn't send us a letter where they, can, where they are expressing their decision. Uh, just making uh, uh, our, our activities are like a party who don't have a... We have problems like everyone, like every uh, political p uh, opposition party. Uh, but that cannot uh, bring us to, to cry, uh, to cry about so one or two militants who resign, who, go, who decide to go to go away. No. Okala Ebode says CPDM's decision to recently install former members of CRM who had left the party since January is with an intention to seek for unnecessary attention. Municipal councillors of the Bafusam Urban Council came to Douala today to better understand the litany of problems in cycling the execution of projects in big cities like Douala. Henry Wana was with them and now reports. The execution of giant projects, for example, road construction and waste management in a cosmopolitan city like Douala has never been easy. This explains why an eight-man delegation from the Bafusam Urban Council, headed by Councillor Roger Tafak, landed in Douala this Friday, August 26, to tap from the Douala City Council skills on how to go about discharging their duty back to their community. The newly constructed multifunctional center in Bepandam was their very first stop. Here, the delegation was shown around the building with explanations given on the different facilities offered by the center. The delegation equally made a stop in UPEM to see for themselves effort made by the Douala City Council in keeping some drainage systems safe. 
Vale Beseke, the ceremonial ground for official events in the city of Douala, was their last stop for the day before meeting with the government delegate to the Douala City Council for further explanations. Dr. Frix Ntonetone expressed gratitude to the Bafusam Oban Council for choosing Douala as their town of reference. However, if all hands are put on deck, then Bafusam will eventually be transformed to a modern city. Uh, il est vrai, c'est tout à fait normal. Uh, Douala, c'est une très grande ville. It is true, Douala is a big city, and from the different sites we have visited, gives the town the image it deserves. Particularly, the effort made this far on the drainage system of the town. We have seen for ourselves how much effort has been done in the fight against floods. As we go back, we shall deposit our report, making positive proposals to the council, so that together we can do something big for our community in Bafusam. Thanks to a financial package worth over 18 billion francs CFFA, from the C to D, the Bafusam Urban Council is striving to transform the city, especially in the domain of infrastructure and hygiene and sanitation. Members of the Cameroon Journalist Syndicate, SNGC, have been meeting here in the economic capital on a two-day training and capacity building workshop. Staff representatives have been schooled on the importance and activities and the future of the syndicate. Philemon Valet completes that story. Cameroon Journalist Trade Union has regrouped staff heads and representatives from media houses in a training workshop to run from August 26 to 27 here in Douala. The rights of such a syndicate took the center table of discussion. Journalists and other media persons were reminded of their civil rights while professional presentations touched across a good number of aspects considered as predicament by these pressmen. It's not belong to trade unions. We work as if uh, our job is not valorized. Our grievances are not heard. We are not paid. Staff delegates don't exist. Even those who exist don't have offices. And we think that this kind of avenue uh, is important so that we can harness our efforts to make the profession better, to make the profession enjoyable. Very satisfied, very satisfied because oftentimes we don't know our rights. Some of us may know, but we don't know our responsibilities. So seminars like this one, training workshops like this one, reawaken our consciousness to the things we are supposed to do, those we are not supposed to do. So I think after this, we are going to move to the field, sensitize our other colleagues who could not make it here, so that we can move a very formidable media force in the country. Those present had a devoted commission to act as messengers in their various outlets nationwide. Uh, uh, considering uh, the attendance so far this morning, and considering the quality of the exposés that were presented, the first two exposés that were presented, we are very hopeful that at the end of the day, our members would come up with uh, the tools to be uh, better actors of the protection and the promotion of the rights of the media workers in Cameroon. Work ethics and measures to render the syndicate more muscular are some envisaged models for Saturday, August 27, the final and day two of the training, which is expected to yield some internal resolutions of the Cameroon Journalist Trade Union. We now talk agriculture. Some group of Cameroonians interested in the agro-pastoral farming and fishing sectors have acquired knowledge on how to develop their own businesses in the agro-pastoral and fishing sectors in Cameroon. They have also been advised to contribute in creating employment opportunities for several youths. Ivonako. Officials of the Support Program for Renovation and Development of Professional Training in the sectors of agriculture, livestock and fisheries, which is affiliated to the Ministries of Agriculture and Rural Development and Livestock, Fisheries and Animal Industries, say in order to achieve socioeconomic growth in the agro-pastoral and fisheries sectors, Cameroonians need to be equipped. If you invest on human beings in terms of competencies, you end up by creating with an employment. Cameroonians are said to possess the potentials and ability to produce value-added products if well orientated in the production process, which starts from the primary stage of cultivating crops to the tertiary level where the output is transformed into new products. Young entrepreneurs in the agro-pastoral and fishery sectors will have to follow three major steps in order to develop groundbreaking projects. The strategic management of your enterprise, you cannot deal 
uh, with enterprise, uh, main, uh, mainly in agriculture and uh, fishery, if you don't master the management of your enterprise. If you want to produce uh, uh, cocoa or poultry, anything that you want to do, you should technically master what the, itinerary, the technical itinerary of what you want to produce. And the last com uh, competence that you should have is you should be able to manage your labor. Some participants at the workshop organized during the fifth edition of SAGO are convinced that the knowledge they have gained will enable them to create their own enterprises, employ others, and also contribute to economic growth. Still in agriculture, the government of Cameroon has handed farm inputs worth 20 million CFA to some selected farmers in the southwest region. The gesture is to boost food crop production and improve on agricultural productivity in the southwest. Ebune Rilindis reports. These farm inputs, which includes 502 bags of fertilizers, 110 liters of liquid fertilizers, 500 liters of herbicides, 373 liters of insecticides, and 600 kilograms of foundation maize seeds, costing the Southwest Development Authority Soweda 20 million francs CFA, are being distributed to 63 farming groups selected from the six divisions of the Southwest region. The general manager of Soweda says these inputs are given to farmers at this period because you have to do anything with the soil in order to get better yields this is the time you should add what you have like we have fertilizers for the farmers secondly this is the time that we should be giving out planting material they need the planting material because it is improved planting material this will help them produce more for the same labor they would have been exerting on poor planting material. So we want that uh, production should be increased. These beneficiaries express joy for such gesture. I want to thank the governor. I also want to thank the head of state for the inputs they are just giving us. And this input is going to help us to increase our yields. So happy. And I wish that the government and the Minister of Agriculture should continue to like that so that our children will benefit. Though this traditional act started since 2008, farmers are expected to make good use of these inputs and shun away from the use of local planting materials. Of the far north region, Miji Wabakari has promised rehabilitation works on the Moraku Kuseri stretch of works will soon resume. He was speaking during an evaluation visit on the site Thursday, August 25th. Mumamanda reports. The heavy machinery has been in place, but three weeks after the arrival, not much has been achieved. Fault of nature, incident heavy rains make it impossible for any serious works. President Paul Beer had ordered for the urgent rehabilitation of the Morakusteri Road to allow for non-stop movement. The job assigned to the Military Engineering Corps was scheduled to round off in three months. In spite of the delay, there are promises that the rehabilitation will resume in the very near future. The Ministry of Public Works and that of the Economy, Planning and Regional Development, together with the World Bank, have gone back to work. So as soon as possible, work will resume. The needed funds for the rehabilitation of the Marwa, Mora stretch are available. Same thing for Mora, Abanga. We are just waiting for the winds to stop for works to begin. Primary focus after the treatment of swamps between Mora and Kuseri will be taken on those from Mora to Waza. The governor of the far north region, visiting the rehabilitation site Thursday, reassured that a job will soon resume. For day-to-day -day supervision, he has charged the regional delegate of public works to keep a close eye. 
A news out of Cameroon, Republican nominee Donald Trump's campaign continues to try and woo black and Latino voters with whom he is lagging badly in the polls. Trump trails Democrat Hillary Clinton nationally among African Americans, 87% to 8% and 73% 22% among Hispanics. Black activists for their part are left asking if Trump cares about their communities, why has he yet to address any minority led organizations. In New York's minority communities this far, Trump's modified stances do not appear to have stuck. Let's get the reaction of some Harlem inhabitants on Donald Trump. With the African diaspora here, and really I feel for Latinos, Indians, whoever is here undocumented, he has to show a bigger picture of his immigration concerns. He has to do a lot especially with uh, immigrants, especially with black African-Americans. Affordable housing, because we have a lot of homeless people on the street. The immigrants also, to me, I think if they legalize, it will help the economy. Making sure that, you know, low-income families are getting the, like, needs, help that they need um, throughout the United States. For the curtains for today, 8 p.m. newscast. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed weekend.